Our economy bulged with satisfaction, sold in mass on the automobile's positively marketed facade, the natural prejudice for individualism. <clears throat> Next mouthful. Still, I'm against running cars out of town. The train will be our car. We're not trucking. I want to slide under the gangster's radar, not run from or by anyone. Will our, will our tails intervene? You know, law supervised? No. No, of course not. Everyone must figure out how to get paid. The fact of life is salary, graft, market savvy, under any name the same, getting paid. A casual criminal once told me it's all about getting paid. His example was knocking over an old lady to spend the weekend with a girl in a motel, followed by long months in prison with other men. Hank tapped the roof. Speaking of formulas for success, these buses are just giant cars. Dag gum, where's the next generation of rail filling in the gaps? Your culture is overrun too, anti-socialist bums. He grinned. Skeptical that they're listening, Mikhail? We're all raised on Cold War suspicion. KGB, CIA, the whole assorted scalding alphabet soup wants to be everywhere. Which, which is a normal way to interpret society's supervisors. Except back then there weren't enough devices yet for secret police and peace officers to be everywhere. People who thought so were considered loopy. I could only hope Hank wasn't completely paranoid. So I pursued that possibility with his terminology, trying to somehow get the preaching out of his system. I said, you said, Humankind's best invention is a way out of the mess. Hank said, no question. We personally produce the energy, and whatever pollution is caused by the manufacturer is more than offset by the bicycle's potential. Cover distances on the bus or train with dependent on speed, then complete the trip on a bike on safer, congested roads. Fulfilled and not in each other's way so much were our own worst enemies, even in this modern age. I simply said bikes are in way of dangerous and patient drivers, he answered. So I said avoiding reckless hazards. He countered battling defenseless metal disease. I insisted there are facts. We are satisfied with efficient, comfortable machines. Even congested, our country doesn't live in road. Neither do you. Roads are for all of us to get somewhere else on our own. You know driving is a pleasure and world full of beautiful cars. Exaggerating economies. A bloom of enemies. Ah! That, that infidel communista tag commercial life with literature's great symbol of the unable to get out of bed bloated aristocrat Oblomov, who was destroyed by his convenient, comfortable life in bed. I contended Hank judged too broadly and said, We're not serfs needing lead anymore, nor is it reasonable to expect sacrifice. Hank thought, then said, Cycling might always just be a cult, but a cult that's right doing more for others than they're willing to do for themselves. It's not my fault I look foolish staring at what's thought too hard to fix. I said, that name Greenway is your trouble. American optimism rolls you over whatever's in your path. No, wait, stop, listen to me. Your bicyclism needs adjustment, an element of pragmatism, scale. Almost every solution is hopeless because you can't tell people what to do. Our country is evidence that doesn't work. Hank smiled. Sound point. Now for argument's sake, let's say our fuel crisis is solved. Fine. Over. Done. You still think catapulting ourselves in projectiles all over the place is a sound idea? calling collisions and disasters accidents when they're obviously caused by mistake. I brought up computer precision is coming, but Hank thought Murphy's law applies. So I asked, who's Murphy? 
Hank didn't know, but he said his catchphrase is, if anything can go wrong, it will. Then jumping out before the entrance to Hammer's Mesdud Narodnaya, the goofball declared, long time till I do that again. No one ever talked with Hank about cars. His conversation was always about plotting to get out of them. His problem was nausea because he never rode in planes or automobiles to adapt to motion sickness. He claimed he was anxious to understand where the hotel's location was and feel the streets before anything. But really, our ride was all about straightening up in an exciting new place. Wow. And discovering what he couldn't do. He loved our city's circular symmetry, garden ring that he couldn't ride. And of course, criticized direct and white Kudusowski prospect as aristocratic transport for beelines straight to and back and forth from their privileged homes. Dacha's plus. The Dacha Express creates more leisure time for them and to each according to how others bleed. Your rich teeter on a pedestal as tall as ours. Guardians of the revolution, phooey. I lost him when I took a wrong turn, but he turned up by the alley where he thought I thought I'd lost him. He refused his special map brought just for him and ran off laughing on his bike with a head start up the new Arbat to beat me to Red Square. When I, when I caught up, he already finished his first ceremonial scan of the square. Still breathing hard, he talked anyway. Nodding to me, Hank I'll said, be, I'll be tied to that map soon enough. I want to feel the streets before programming my mind to them. I've noticed regimentation can overwhelm the senses, make capacities we prefer rigid, into ladders of knowledge difficult to jump from to others. <clears throat> Why would anyone leap from security? I said, Ya neznayu, is I don't know in Russian. Hank refaced the Kremlin and spoke normally. Sorry, I'm late. As if they talked together all the time, Hank paced, thinking out loud. 